The thing is, is that um, you, you said earlier about the, the low touches, or is that something like seven? Yeah, seven, yeah, touches? seven. Simply because what he's got. To, okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. So sorry, we're so laughing sorry. because yeah, Raichi's yeah, just, yeah, yeah, just been told We've, that yeah. we have Leandro <laughs> Cross and, and he, okay. he answered out loud, which is brilliant. That's what we love about that. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> right, Leandro, it is absolutely wonderful to have you with us. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> And how did it feel to be scoring the, the decisive goal in such an important game today? Yeah, it's always nice to score, obviously. Um, but, yeah, we knew it would be a tough game today and um, that we need, needed to take our chances. And uh, luckily we did with, with my goal and uh, it, took, it gave us the three points. Leandro, hi, it's Alan Shearer. Um, Hello. We're, we're just having the discussion about squad and rotation. Back in our day, myself, right, Ian, and, and Mario, it's, it's like we, we wanted to play and we insisted on playing. If we weren't playing, that, that we were happy. Is the mentality nowadays that if you're a top player, you perhaps have to accept that you're going to be rotated and be, and be left out in certain games? Yeah, I think so. Uh, obviously, <laughs> everyone wants, wants to play every game. Um, but yeah, if you have a squad of 20 to 25 players who are all exceptional, it's it's hard to, to get get everyone uh, game time, obviously. But um, I think the competition pushes you as well. And uh, obviously, we have a great squad. So, But I, I uh, it is Mario Melchior speaking, Alejandro. Hi. But I saw your goal for Belgium, right? <coughs> you scored an amazing goal. And then you come back in your team and you're not starting. Your confidence is, of course, very high. And I saw you hugging your coach. Mm -hmm. What do you feel inside, my friend? I want to know that. <laughs> Tell us the truth. Tell us the truth. <laughs> I want to know what's cooking in that body, man. Tell me. Happiness, of course. Um, like you said, I scored a, a great goal on, on the international. Uh, and I'm feeling good at the moment. Uh, I've, I've been in preseason pre as well. And uh, obviously, I want to play. And um, the only thing where, where I can show I, I have to play more is, uh, is on the pitch. And I think I've done that today. And it's, I'm happy that I helped the team uh, to get the three points. Leandro, it's Ian Wright. I just wanted to ask about yeah. the, how frustrating the first half was. You know, 78% possession. What, what are you thinking? Are you thinking we just got to keep doing what we're doing? We need to pass it quicker. What are you, what are you thinking? Because it's getting more and more frustrating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that we need to, need to be patient. Um, obviously, we knew it would be a tough game and that they would defend uh, the goal with their lives. And uh, at one point, uh, that the chances would come. And uh, like I said, then it's up to us to take them and score a goal. And I think we defended the box really well as well today. And then, um, yeah, you can see one goal is enough to win a game. And uh, we're really happy with it. And Leandro, I mean, last season, we've been talking about it in the studio, Arsenal came so close. So how does it feel now this season, being that team that all of the others really want to beat? Does your preparation take a, a different course? What is it like? No, I think it's it's quite similar. Um, obviously, we were so close and um, we want to, to, yeah, to compete this season as well. And uh, I think uh, uh, we added a lot of exceptional players as well but obviously they're um, Declan uh, Timber obviously is now uh, injured unlucky but uh, uh, Kai um, I think we have a great squad to compete this season on, on all uh, on all levels and uh, it's 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 an amazing team spirit at the moment everyone is I think happy and uh, pushing each other and that's what is football all about Leandro just a, just a quick one do you, do you ever look and see what Man City have done, if they've won or anything, do you ever look and see, oh, no, they've won again? Um, yeah, you, you hear... <laughs> <laughs> we I knew he was going to lie. <laughs> you obviously hear the, the scores, and um, if you don't see, you will obviously have a look at, uh, at the other scores as well, so you always know before a game uh, what they've done, or they have to play at the same time or something like that. Do you feel pressure because of that? Do you feel like we have to beat Everton now because we have to stay amongst it with those three points? We have to get three points. Um, no, I don't think so. We want to win every game and uh, that's our approach uh, every single match. Um, that we want to win and take as much points as possible and that's uh, our thinking behind it. Nice. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Leandro. No best problem. of luck in the Champions League midweek. Thank you. Well done, Leandro. You're the best. In London <laughs> derby. Yeah, right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, we spoke to Leandro and you let us know that he yes. was there. Thank you for that, by the yeah, way. No we were talking about Nketiah I was talking yes. about what he needs to improve on. How do you get those improvements out of him? I think that what, um, what you saw today, like you were talking about being a low-touch striker, what happens is, is that when you get like this one here, this is, this, that is a, 
for me, a, a meet and drink one for a forward. You have to be gambling at this stage. He's on the right side here. From now, he's got to be moving already. He's got to be closer to that defender. He's got, this goes past that defender, so he's got to be at least sliding or something to, to finish that off. Those are the things that if you're low touch, then you've got to make it up in the box. You know, those are the places here. He's got to shoot there, Al. Yeah. I think you, the, this, the chances there, that's what you've got to do. That's kind of half chances. And when you've got someone like Jesus who's going to come on and probably who will start in front of you, every opportunity you get to take a half chance or get a shot on target, you have to take it because that's the thing that's going to keep you in the team and keep people saying, well, Eddie's got to play. Because that's what they were saying before this game. He deserves his chance. But then when you see little things like we just pointed out there and what Al said about certain touches and certain finishes, you have to do those at this level. It's almost, it's almost like Riley is saying, it's like you want the defender, as a defender, you want to panic. Panicking meaning that you don't know where he is because he's always there. And I think that is kind of a thing that if he wants to put pressure on the likes of myself, then you, you, you don't know where he is, but you always know he's around you. And that is always a problem for the defender to keep on thinking. And I think if he does that, it becomes way more enjoyable for himself. And I guess that's something that will evolve for him. Uh, as, is it coaching that will get that out of him or learning from other strikers? How does he learn? A, a bit of everything. A bit of watching other strikers, elite strikers, doing what they're doing in training. Um, also taking hints or, or coaching from from the staff and his uh, and, and Mikel Arteta, mm -hmm. there's there's definitely a centre forward in there. Without then, doubt, the, the, there's no doubt mm -hmm. about it. He'll score goals at the at the the highest level, but it's just those little tiny things when you get the opportunity to take them and to have that little bit of movement, then you have to do it. Otherwise, will there'll always be that little question: Is he is he is it elite? Can he, is he something different from a very a good striker to going to a very good striker? Yeah, it's all fine margins, isn't it? Well, let's mm. hope he watches this back because he could learn a lot from what you've all just said. <laughs> you, if you went with Raya for the Champions League. It, it won't surprise <clears throat> me because uh, clearly he, he proved himself in the sense of the way he was playing. But the, the, the thing is that you just, you just don't want it. I, I wouldn't want that as a player. That's me. You know, let's not, we, can't, we can't forget our great Aaron Ramsdale's been for us. Yeah. yeah. You know, so for Aaron Ramsdale to have a, an international goalkeeper um, as his number two or whichever one you want to call one or two, it's, it's fantastic for the both of them. It comes down to both of them having to be the best they have to be. Would you like it being rotated when you were a Exactly. You know, you know, it's easy, yeah, but so I, just ask the question now. Yeah, but the thing is, I wouldn't like to have been rotated, but I, I wouldn't have got rotated. Uh, <laughs> But if I was playing, would you, what would you say if you had to no, rotate no, with me? No, it's a different time. It's a different time. Back then, I wasn't getting rotated, and maybe it might be, oh. it might be me being I think a little bit big-headed. But we, the fact is, I didn't get rotated. Went, I don't have happened? to think about it. If we, oh, were the, if we were in the green room, he might give us a slightly different <laughs> answer. <laughs> OK, so we've got two strikers oh, with us. Oh, Al, God. who would you rather go up against? Raya or Ramsdale? It wouldn't bother me. I'd still score. So. <laughs> oh, 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 wow. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You know, it's easy for us to say this now. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, my God. You see, now you understand. When yeah. I had to mark him, oh, it was like I was married to him. <laughs> <laughs> you see what he said? And now you get it. Oh, fantastic. Oh, it's brilliant. Well, um, so let's have a look at a couple of the talking points. Mm. Martinelli did get on the score yeah. sheet, didn't he? But yeah, Nketiah was offside, was offside yeah, marginally. Was. Let's revisit that. What did we think of this? Well, like I say, I said before, you know, I, I, it's something that annoys me, watching players not get themselves back on side. It was something that when we played, it was one of the things that you, in training, you know, even when they were doing the, 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 just the games, you said, get back on side. All you've got to do is get yourself back on side because that can happen. All of a sudden, the ball will come to you, you're on side, you link the play, and then this is a goal. And I think that the margins we're dealing with now is something they've got to get back to. They've got to get back to centre forwards. Once they've gone running an offside position, get yourself back on side as soon as you can because that can happen. Simple. Young is a very happy guy, yeah, at this moment. Young was very happy that yeah. that moment happened mm. because yeah. he, that pass killed him. Well, we've had this whole sort of talking point and conversation about Enketia or Jesus. Mm. Of course, Enketia started today. I'm sure Jesus will probably start yeah. midweek. But what more do you want to see from <coughs> Enketia? It, I think we'll we'll continue to have the discussion to say, is he is he is he the elite? Is he the is he the top draw striker that perhaps Arsenal? need to go to that next level. Now, we'll keep on asking that, those questions because 
it's important that when he gets the opportunity, like he has done, yeah. like he has done again today, and the manager said, "No, I'm having belief and faith in you, and I'm putting mm. you in, putting you in again." Then he, he has to take those opportunities. And today, I, I just, I just thought there were there were two or three occasions. One being the disallowed goal. Mm. There was a, there was a couple in that second half where I'm thinking, "Come on, get on the end of it, get into that yeah. six yard box, and and get that little tap in that all great strikers do." And he, he just, it was just a split second where he was a little bit slow. So yeah. until he keeps or, or, or does that, then those questions are still going to be asked. Broken, what does it mean to come to your old club and win? They've caused you some pain over the last few years. Yeah, we talked about it. We, this is the challenge for six years we haven't won here and and there were a few reasons for it. Um, and it's how we do things, but as well the input that you put in every single action and how you impose in, in this ground. And I think we played an incredible game. We kept them really, really quiet. We created many, many chances. Probably the first goal as well should be allowed, and and we dominated the game. And, and we are extremely happy to to go away with a with a win, with a clean sheet, and and with a good feeling. Yeah. So it's actually easier to talk about that disallowed goal because you've won anyway. But so what did you make of it? Yeah, it comes off the opponent, you know. But um, I don't know. I don't know the reason why they they've done it. Um, yeah, we are sitting here today, and now sorry, and um, and we don't need it. But um, yeah, that could have changed the game as well much uh, earlier. And how is Martinelli? Yeah, he felt something. So one of the sprints, I don't know if it was the action when when he goes and scores the goal of the next one, he felt something in his hammy. So he would need to be assessed. Okay. So what did you do here today that you've not done in the last five visits? I think we took the game for longer periods and to the areas that we wanted in the way that we wanted and we looked really solid and we gave very, very, very little away, if I don't say nothing, because they haven't created a single chance. And uh, and that shows maturity, desire, but as well intelligence, because it's about the fight and it's really good and the fight and win the duel and the second ball, but at the end, that game, we're not going to win it against them because they are bigger and they are stronger than us. But the other one, we managed to do it and, and I really pleased the way we, we played. Did you start to worry? Obviously, we've touched on the dislike loud goal at a certain point with your record here. Does the goal come just in time? You're starting to think, yeah, oh, it's going to be again. Another chance and another chance and you get momentum and you get the territory and everything and you don't get it. Um, but at the end, we found a way to, to score and um, and we were really solid defensively as well. So Trossard's had to be patient at the start of the season, but that is some finish, isn't it? <laughs> That's a great finish. But he, he did it a few days ago with, with Belgium as well. And uh, and this is what we need. The players that came in in the starting 11, they did really well. The subs, they did really well. And, and that's what is required. Now we're playing 100 minutes in the Premier League. Every three days we're going to have a game. And you need everybody on your toes. And this is what I want to build, that everybody feels that he's got an opportunity and, and we fully trust him. Yeah, the goal comes ultimately from a corner. He took a lot of short corners today. Mm. And actually, it was sort of noticing commentary. He took a little bit of time. Then when? Can you just tell us the, the hard work that goes in? No. What do you mean no? <laughs> <laughs> there are ways, different ways to attack, different ways to um, to try to take advantages on, on opponents' weaknesses, and obviously they are really strong in in the box, and you need alternatives, and how we find a, the way to open it up. Yeah. So actually, spoke to Leandro Trossard on a very basic level. Is it a case of? They're all massive, so don't pump it into the box where they can head it away. No, you can, and, and you can still score. It's about the, the possibilities and, and the probabilities, which is different. But, um, yeah, it's like creating a story at the end, in the game, and, and the players have to feel when is the right moment to do it. Uh, David Raya, good, solid debut today. We want competition and rotation in there. But does he need a, a run now to get himself comfortable and established? What I want is that the players that deserve to play, that they play. And you know, when Fabio deserves to play, he's been knocking in the door for a few weeks now and, and you can tell that he was ready and he contributed. He had some great actions that he could have been in, in goals and um, and that's what we need. Everybody, when they are ready, they play, they play well. And, and I think both of them, they did that today. So no new number one. It's a move, movable feast, if you like. And Fabio, what is it? What number is Fabio? Vieira? What number? Yeah, you said number one. Fabio, what number is he? <laughs> We're talking about the goalkeepers, though, aren't we? Yeah, but it's not. We have we play with eleven players, I think. Football, eleven players. They are all the same. Eleven players. Okay. I don't. I don't want to play with ten or with nine. Or no, if I could play with twelve, twelve. So I don't know, Fabio, what number it is. Okay. Thanks, Mikel. Thank you. <laughs> so what was what going just on? Went on? He didn't get it. I'm very confused by the ending. Mm. That one thing I will say is that. Arteta has managed this group of players, this squad, incredibly well because of the rotation we have seen. He seems to still be getting the best out of the players. Yeah, he is, and, and I think the players understand what he wants. There's a there's a mass there's a winning mentality if, that's going through throughout the club, and everybody who comes in, he, he expects them to do 
do their job. And like he said there, you know what I mean? He just wants the players to compete very hard for their place. And if you're playing well, you'll get a chance. Yes, you're going to have to wait. Some people might be knocking on the door, but you're going to have to wait. But then when you do get the chance, then you have to take the chance. That's how it should be at that level yeah. of a team that's trying to achieve what they're trying to achieve. That's how it should be. And earlier on, Alan, you were talking about time being one of the most precious commodities in this game because you quite simply don't have it. But mm. one thing Arteta has been given with this team mm. is a bit of time, hasn't he? He's been given a bit of time to really like, get to know the players, bed them in, and it seems to be paying off. How, how much praise does he deserve for the way he's handled? Yeah, but you have, to, you have to be shown a sense of purpose, a sense of adventure and a, a sense of we're actually achieving yeah. something yeah. and there's no doubt that <laughs> Arsenal are doing that and Mikel is, is doing that I think um, month after month season after season they're getting better they're improving he's, he's had to change one or two things um, in the summer and he's, he's been, he hasn't been afraid to have, to have done that because he realises to challenge and to go to the next level and win the Premier League Something has to change and it has to be different because they tried a very, very hard last year. They came very close, but ultimately they didn't get what they wanted. He now wants, he now wants to do that again, but he wants to get over that final hurdle again. I mean, it's going to be difficult mm. because they're up against a very, very good team and manager <clears throat> yeah. in Man City. In a way, they're slightly unlucky that in this era they've come up against City, who are so great yeah. and who have been dominating for yeah. so long. Because in other seasons, he, he, he would have won that. Yeah. Um, but he deserves a lot of credit, yeah, because you can tell he's not frightened to make big decisions and you have mm. to do that as a manager. Yeah, you have to be brave, you have to be bold as a manager, don't you? And you <laughs> think about Manchester City setting the bar, obviously the teams that are vying for top four, uh, they have to live up to those standards, don't they, if they want to make it into the top four. And also, because you think about Man City, Liverpool, they're there or thereabouts. Brighton will be up there. Uh, Manchester United potentially, potentially Chelsea, mm -hmm. I don't know. But Arsenal, for, for sure, you would think would... Uh, Newcastle, Newcastle. Was getting to that. I was getting to that. I knew I was, it was yeah, I was just that. saving the best. <laughs> but they have to keep raising their levels because there's so much competition, is what I'm trying to say. For, yeah, for but the they kind four. of answered us a little bit in a way. I think, I think the Declan Rice moment was kind of the biggest answer for us to understand what their uh, objective is in the sense of like, hey, if we're going to go, because normally Arsenal was not the team of going for that kind of price tag, but they did not want to lose out because they already had it with Mudrik, the way they kind of felt like, okay, someone came in front of us, Chelsea, and then now they said, that's not going to happen again when Man City came in. So I think watching them, Arteta has a team, he has built a team that you can see that they all, we, we talked about it before, about the connection to him, that they like him and they, they enjoy working with him. But also, I always his character was also about winning. Mm. Like, playing against Everton was almost playing against him. Mm. Yeah. So that's why we knew what kind of player he was. And as a manager, I don't think he's any different. So looking ahead, righty, Champions League, PSV, mm -hmm. got Spurs in the North London derby, yeah, and then Manchester City. Yeah. Some big games coming up. But, but, <laughs> well, those are three, three games. I, I wouldn't say the PSV game so much because it's the Champions League game. It's the first one. We're not really into the meat and bones of it yet. But that's a big game for Arsenal still. But then, obviously, Tottenham and Tottenham's form at the moment, which is very, very good. So the derby is going to be unbelievable. Then, obviously, Manchester City, who I believe, if Arsenal have got serious intentions of winning the league, they're going to have to beat them at least once. They're going to have to beat them because they're going to have to beat them and then they have to beat the teams around them and hope that other teams are able to cause Man City problems as well. Because if they don't beat them at least once, then it's going to be very, very difficult to, 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 to do it. You have to get something from them and you've got to make sure that you build the momentum and the confidence in the team. So by the time you get to them, which I'm, I'm, I'm quite pleased that they dug this one out and they're going to get to yeah. through PSV and then they're going to get to City and we're ready for it after <laughs> Tottenham. After Tottenham, then it's City. We've got to be ready for that game because... We've got to understand, you have to get something from City. We have to beat them at least once in this season. We have to beat them. Two huge home games coming up for Arsenal. OK, let's head straight back to Goodison Park, shall we, and hear from the Everton boss. Here he is, Sean Dyche. Well, Sean, it took a real moment of quality to sell it. What did you make of the 90 minutes plus? Yeah, we, we defended in numbers, which you have to against teams like this often. Um, not always, but often. Um, 
did well on that side of the game, but with the ball we're, we're miles off, we gave it away too many times. When you break their play and you counter, you've got to keep the ball. You've got to play with their bits of quality, which we never found. Um, and really, I mean, I appreciate you thinking it's a good finish, but it's a poor, from our setup point of view, it's a poor goal. Yeah, Ashley Young said exactly the same thing. So, what needs to be better to stop them working it into that situation? Well, just the details. You know, we set the players up, but the details have cost us all season. That's something we've got to correct. I mentioned it before the game. I mentioned it again now. You know, both boxes are vital. You've got to stay focused. We know they're a good side. They've got some top players. They've shown that last season. Nearly went to win the title. Um, had a good start this season. So you've got to be aware that they, you know, them, them details are massive uh, in football, and they were again today. So you said miles away on the ball. How? What could have been better there? Just the character to go and get the ball. You know, you've got to want the ball and you've got to use it. You know, it's not just about getting it, winning it back. You've then got to use it. You know, on turnover, it's not. I said at half time, you, you can't just win it back and go, right, job done. You've got to then, uh, activate yourself as a team. And I just thought that was lacking. Um, and, but then the quality, don't get me wrong, it builds belief if you find players who can find a pass. The players then open up. Working counter, if the first pass is wrong, doesn't give you a chance to counter anyway. So therefore, you're just defending again. So is that a, a bad run of results? I appreciate you'll say that some of the performances so far have been pretty decent. Is that a, a, some bad results, chipping away at confidence a little bit? Well, it doesn't help, obviously. You want results, and if you don't get them, you know, you do lose, lose that element of, you know, how, how, how you're believing in what you're doing. But to be honest, we've got some experienced players here. We've got some very good players. Um, I appreciate it's a tough challenge against Arsenal anyway. They're, they're a top side, we know that and they played very well at times today. Um, but, but still, it's looking at ourselves, you know, what we can deliver. Uh, booze at full time, which I think was centred around the amount of stoppage time played. Uh, any gripe about that, personally? Well, I, I don't know where you want me to start with that. I mean, uh, the performance of the officials, I, I didn't think it was on par today with, with the norms. I thought we had a penalty. You know, the lad uh, fouls Beto. Um, he gets booked. Duke goes into the box. Same sort of thing, lad body checks him, nothing given. I, I can't let them ones out me. You know, people you tap you on the shoulder and there's a penalty nowadays, but apparently that's not a penalty. OK, so there may be a lack of consistency there. Well, I just thought, you know, the officials, you want consistent. We keep getting told about surrounding the ref, keep getting told about killing the game, keep getting told all these things. They're right in front of our eyes and nothing gets done. And then there's four minutes at the end. Two weeks ago, we're at Sheffield United, there's eight minutes, then there's another mystery, 45 minutes to allow a corner to come in in the last kick of the game, which Jordan has to make a fantastic save from a double save, in fact. Where does that live? We're just going, right, OK, we'll lose, deciding what. Um, but anyway, that's nothing to do with the performance, though. I must make that clear. They're a top side. And we, we, we have them perfect. We worked. We stopped them in many ways, but didn't create enough, anywhere near enough to win the game. So how do you move forward from here, Sean? Continue with the work with the players. We're getting players fit. We're getting a bit deeper in our squad. We're still limited in certain areas, but can you continue working? You, you always, actually, when you're on a, a winning run and a moment like now, you always seem really sort of calm, really level. But the, the situation you're facing now, you've got the off-pitch noise, obviously a poor start to the season in terms of results. How are, you, how are you feeling about it? How are you coping? Well, it's been like that for a couple of seasons. Everyone knows that. So the noise has been there for a couple of seasons. The on-pitch stuff has been there a couple of seasons. We're looking to constantly work to correct it. We've been working as diligent as we could in the market. Um, we're, we're working as a team on the training ground. The performances haven't bought us what I think we deserve because this could be a different situation, a different conversation, but it's not. We're the only ones that could correct that. Do people have to sort of bed down, get ready for a tough season? Is it going to be another struggle, albeit no, one you hope to come through? No, it's a season built on the reality of this football club over the last couple of seasons. It's, it's a work in progress. I said at the end of the last season, after the last game, I wasn't jumping for joy, screaming my head off. I was going, there is miles to go here, massive amounts of work to be done. And I said it's going to take time, and it will take time to change everything around. Yeah, and how big a professional challenge for you is that? I've had lots of them. It's just another one. Last season was arguably the biggest one. We got that one done and now it's just same more same more let's go again and let's make it right right thank you thank you well well it's a long season ahead isn't it i mean there are only five games in but it feels like everton are already going to be battling relegation mm. with the way things have gone so far he talked about the fact that there's been fine details that have cost them this season and the fine details make such a difference one of those being the penalty shout that he believes they should have been awarded. This was a foul from Saliba on Decore. Now, we did look at this, didn't we, earlier on, but what did you make of it, Mario? Yeah, you, look, at this moment, I understand what he's going for because he knows that he's only going to get a couple of chances. And this opportunity is going to be for him, like, if I get the pen, I can change the game. But clearly, you can see Saliba pulling his leg back. If you <laughs> ask me and I would be Saliba, I would not want to get... I would not agree with a penalty. So that's why I think this call was, for me, was clear. For him, 
I think as a team and as a coach, yeah, what really uh, today was really key for him was looking at small margin. I understand that. But you also have to remember, when your team goes down, what do you do next? And I don't think they had an answer to that. And I think that is going to be very important for him because they tried to come out and tried to attack Arsenal. did not have an answer to that. And now looking at the games that are coming up, their next game is Brentford. Then they get what? Brentford, Villa, the, they play Luton, and then they're going to have that big one against Liverpool. So, oh, and Bournemouth comes before that, and then Liverpool. Uh, but you need to win those games from the teams around Especially you. Especially against Luton, right? Yeah, because I've been be. in this situation. Where they in now? I've been there. When I, when <laughs> I came to England, I knew your competition around that at the bottom you got to win. It's a different and league. And then you get, exactly. And mm. then when you play Liverpool, when you go against Liverpool, your derby game, you now come in with confidence. If they don't win that, that game is going to be tough. I, I totally understand and get his frustration about that penalty incident. Yeah. Because all players, coaches, managers want is consistency. Now, he, w he will look at that and think, penalty, without doubt. I don't. But... I didn't think Newcastle was a penalty either yesterday. Yeah. Um, I didn't think the one at the beginning of the season that um, Thomas Frank was complaining about yesterday. Mm. Shardy on well, Vicario on Shardy. Now the the, the, the rules that were was spelled out to us was an inevitable collision. Well, that yesterday, I don't think it's any different what we're seeing now to what we saw today with the goalkeeper. The goalkeeper goes for it. He yeah. shouldn't be there in the first place, but he goes for it and he and he pulls out. Now, that's exactly what Saliba did today. He yeah. went for it, he pulled out, he stopped. Yeah. He didn't make the challenge. Now, look at what Gordon does there. Gordon chucks his right leg into the goalkeeper to make sure there's contact. Now, the keeper stopped. Now, I understand the assistant rather than the referee has given that. Mm -hmm. But when you're seeing one that's given like that and not the one that's given today, you think, come on, man. I mean, we, we just want a little bit of consistency. Yeah. And a, that's yeah, all. And a bit, of, a, a bit of common sense of it as well in respects of the proximity of where the ball is and where the goalkeeper is, where he's, he's pulling out. Mm. Can you, can, is Gordon going to get on that ball and is that a goal-scoring opportunity? So we know what the player's trying to do there. The same with Decore here, as much as we can see it. So the Newcastle one given, Decore's one, I actually thought that he knocked the ball too far and he was looking for something. Yeah. He was, when you look at this, the ball's gone, that's gone. He's now looking for, for something to actually contact. You know, we can see that as pro, we can see that what yeah. they're trying to do now. They're trying to, okay, that's my last chance to try and get the pen. So look, the ball's gone, look at but, him now, look. But, but what I would say was, is Gordon's gone. Gordon's not getting that no ball yesterday yeah. at Newcastle. Yeah. I mean, that's gone into it's... the Gallagher end. He's not getting that at all. So there's no different to say, well, that ball's gone. Yeah. And compared to that one, he's not getting that. The, so he's, got... he's, he's, made the, he's made the contact look with his right leg yeah. there. To begin with, he might catch him with his left leg, but the first contact was with the right leg. Yeah. Now, just to say that, that I'm, I'm, I'm not biased. I'm a Newcastle <laughs> fan. I just don't Are you not biased? That. Are you not biased? Not, no, no, no. <laughs> not but yeah, the thing is, is that yeah. the referees have got to start seeing... Like, we can see that. Yeah. Those two from, are not penalties. Yeah. They are not penalties, yeah, none of I, them. I, I, but I, one's I, given and one's, one's not, not, and that's what Sean Dyche is complaining about. Yeah. It's also, as and a he's right I would be upset if they would have given that penalty me as a defender, I would be very angry. And I would be right in his mm. face and saying like, OK, not touching him because that's a different way now. But I would be standing in front of him and saying like, come on now, Ref, are you kidding? Yeah. Mm. Come on, you cannot give that penalty because yeah. I'm holding back, I'm holding in and I'm yeah. not... I don't want to touch him, but he's touching me. Mm. Yeah. What, what's the answer to wrap this up? Mm. Might be a difficult question, but how do we get consistency, Alan? <laughs> what, what, what's the, what do we have to do? <laughs> How long we got? <laughs> <laughs> Talk together. <laughs> you know what I think. You know what I think. If I, I would web, I would web will get it done. I believe. Yeah, he's trying really I, he, hard. I mean, he's, he's trying so he's hard. He's trying to improve. Yeah. He's working hard. There's there's certainly more communication. He's mm. trying to improve ref, refereeing standards. We probably have to accept that it's going to take time to do that. Mm. Yeah. Okay. That's all it is. It's the Emirates Stadium in North London. I'm Derek Ray, and joining me here on the commentary box is Lee Dixon. And we've got Premier League action coming right up. It's Arsenal facing Everton. Yeah, thank you, Derek. Always my favourite time of the week, spending time with you at games. We should be in for a belter here with these two. 
Here are the starters for Arsenal. Bernd Leno is the goalkeeper. Thomas Partey starts with Granit Xhaka in the centre of the pitch. And the main forward here is Alex Lacazette. Now he must favour the cross. Well, it looked highly promising, but they got nothing out of it. And here's how Everton line up. Jordan Pickford stands between the posts. Luca Digne plays with Seamus Coleman in the fullback positions. Abdu oh, in with a chance! Is it going to be? Good defending to prevent the chance. Well, not giving him any breathing room. He's had to go for it. Wins the ball. Well, it's always a tantalising prospect watching Martin Odegaard close up. Lee, what do you think we might see from him? Well, I love watching him. He's got quick feet, quick mind. He wants you to come close to you so he can get past you. So his defenders normally stand off him and then he's got more time to pick the pass he wants and he normally finds the best one. Promising looking ball. And the alarm bells are ringing. It's opened up for him. A truly magnificent start. An early goal in the game. Just what they were hoping to produce. Well, here's the replay. He's done really well to get his head up and pick out a teammate. And it all leads to a 2v1 on the keeper, which he really doesn't have any chance with. It's a great team goal. So the match has restarted. 1-0 here. Martin Odegaard. Possession changes hands. The interception there. And a throw-in it's going to be. Might be a chance here. Just cleared away in the nick of time. So the corner played into the box. But the keeper takes command. Not the result from the set piece.